Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number one. They weren't the strongest. Written by Ender's Game 69. Dominance amongst most species we've encountered in our surveys was usually very straightforward. I've documented hundreds of wolves and the species that dominate over them, and it's almost always fairly easy. There are a few key characteristics. The strongest dominate most places, but if they are displaced, it is almost always by something smarter. That is why so many wolves end up developing some form of intelligent life. Nature selects for intelligence. But it also favors one characteristic in any given bio. So you often do have very strong species, sometimes very fast species, others which have flight or sharp senses, some predatory aspect that lets them, when combined with their intelligence, take the lead and develop a civilization. I thought I'd seen it all until I got to dirt. And now, to properly guide the council's decision on whether to contact the species or not, I present my observations in the most unbiased way that I can. The proposals laid out are in threefold. A. Contact and guidance. B. Quarantine. C. Contact and admittance. The final of the trio of options being submitted by those worlds hoping that the species will be of use in the walls to take place in the fringes. Before I lay out my reasoning and methodology, I will name my recommendation. Quarantine this world immediately. Do not contact them. Do not go near them. Do not invite them to join us. Do not hire their soldiers or militaries as mercenaries. Let them develop on their own, and hopefully they will destroy themselves. I'm sure you're wondering about just why I made such extreme recommendations. To that end, I want to elaborate on our methodologies. For starters, our grey men researchers mistook the location of their brains. It turns out that the orifices that they were probing were in fact not a worm-based hive mind, but rather for the expulsion of waste. The inhabitants of Planet Dirt incorporated some of their probing activities, and it became a dismissed and disbelieved part of their culture. Then in accordance with the 34th rule of theirs, they began to make sex of the stories of it, some of them even dressing up in our grey man species. One recollection of our probers was so close to the real thing that their researcher quit her position and left in disgust after she recognized herself in the costume. They are the most perverted species that I have ever encountered. There is nothing that they will not mate with, and evidently they have abundant desires to go out into the stars and seek new species for copulation. One of their story heroes, a uh, Captain Kirk, did so frequently. This by itself makes these primates disturbing and disgusting, but not dangerous. But then there are the other facets. There are stronger species, faster species, but there is no species so dangerous as this one. Not because they are the most cunning, because we have many intelligent species comparable with their own, but rather because they are the most bloodthirsty species that I have ever seen. A typical predatory species hunts to eat, and nothing more. This is how most predatory species in the galaxy that become dominant ended up taking the top spot in their own food chains. They had time to build civilizations. Humans, however, are, in their own words, not dominant because they are the strongest or the smartest, but because they and their ancestors were... And I must emphasize that I quote them here, the craziest motherfuckers in the jungle. We hacked into their networks to speak directly and anonymously with the people, asking about what made humanity great, asking for histories and stories and reference. I admit that they make compelling media, but everything we found that they told us, do not touch. For example, 
When they're injured, lose a limb that they can't repair itself. They create new limbs out of metal and send them back into the fight. If they are sufficiently displeased, they fight for generations, not even looking to win, just to make victory an impossibility for their enemies. Revenge drives them. Bloodlust follows them. They breed rapidly, reaching fighting A's as young as 13, and full maturity only a few years after that. Their females bear only one or two young per year, but they are fertile all year round, and unlike most sexually dimorphic species, both sexes are beyond madness by civilized standards. Their women will cut you as fast as their men, making nearly 100% of the age population a potential military force. They fight over money, mates, and even imaginary beings which some think will reward them after death if they live and die well. If we contact their species in order to use them as a military asset, we may, after giving them modern weapons, win battles, but we will lose the war. They will spread, they will start small, but they will spread until they have bases everywhere. And then they will screw or murder their way over the galaxy until they are on top of it. Some idiot will harm a family, a mate will die, offspring, Normally, the most expendable of the average intelligent species are highly treasured by these primates. And so, if one of them is harmed, it could fuel one of them or more to start a military campaign of revenge that can only be curbed by the death or final victory. This happened numerous times in the history, where a mate or a child died or was abused by a stranger or an enemy nation and spawned years of destructive war. I know some of you will say, use them as fodder, but that will not end well. Some will die, but carry their knowledge home, and every clash will teach them more until they are the best troops. Then they will be too important to waste. Then we will put them in charge, and when the wars are over, the war will come home to us. Do not contact this world. Do not hire this world. Leave them alone, I implore you. That was what I told the council, and it seems all I did was convince them that Earth provided perfect, untapped military assets. Why hire an expert if you're not going to listen to them? I asked my mate, and she embraced me, her wings folded around my back and feathers fluffing out to hold in our precious heat. You did your best. That is all that you can do. But what next? She asked with a shiver. It'll take some of their generations for the problems to begin, so we will be fine. But with the first groups of primate mercenaries going out now, it is inevitable. So we are going to prepare to leave for the far corners of the galaxy. We at least can have the sense to avoid them. This is all we can do. As for the rest of the Council Worlds, uh, all we can do is pity them. End of story. Story number two. Do you know what rat is? Written by Carl Bynes. Scientist Siliath entered the hall quietly, surprisingly calm for her situation. The newly appointed research delegate, usually was shaking their hair, feathers, or other applicable comparison off when they were doing their first presentation to the panel. Siliath was still calmly waiting a turn next to the many other distressed delegates. When you are a speciologist, as I am, you learn mostly about the species culture, the body of something, how joints move, how the energy is produced. It's simple. There are oddities, of course. Look at some of you in this hall. There are many quirks of each species. They're interesting, obviously. Oh, we wouldn't care about cataloging them, Siddiath said, taking her tablet and moving the projector screen through many different models of the species present, showing the many odd adaptations species made as they evolved within and after leaving their cradle planet. There is only so many ways a body can work, however, and only so many quirks a species can have. That is why we study how culture works, what their history is. It tells the story of a species, 
why they might have differently shaped eyes, or turn certain colors based on emotion, or have hands for climbing and grabbing, Sidious said, once again changing the view, focusing on the more common, more utilitarian adaptations assorted species had made. Humans, humans are very different in this area. We all think of them as a simple species. They fit the biological mold perfectly. A reasonable number of limbs, high endurance, and complex brains that can create tools and the like. Perfect fits for whatever labor or products our great leaders here would use them for. The last bit was a slight stutter. That was noticed, but overall, everyone thought that she was doing amazing. As a teacher rested in the academic seat, she was almost inspired by the young student. The way they are different, however, is their emotions and social structure. What we so intelligently... Celia stopped for a moment, regaining her composure as the other delegates nodded sympathetically. What we threw away as mere primal urges, like that to mate, or useless things like losing motivation, or what they call sadness, they still have. Yet, they still thrive with these things. Sidious said, bringing up a picture of a human brain, different areas highlighted, labeled with what they did and how. Many of their emotions can actually be motivators, something that they learned over time. Respected, Council. Do your translators have anything for the word wrath? Sidious asked, her eyes beginning to almost glow for a moment as she said it. All but one of the species' representatives gave obvious signs that they knew nothing of it. One of them listening to the translator for a moment longer, one of the younger species, then shaking his head in disbelief and turning back to the presenter. Wrath is a human emotion, one that took me a long, long time before I ever witnessed. But when I did, it was so enlightening. A human feels wrath in many situations. Emotions are, of course, subjective. But there is one common criteria for it, Sadia said, looking down for a moment as she pulled up a video, but didn't yet play it. A human will usually feel wrath when they feel wronged, when they feel that something isn't just bad or exploitative towards them, but when something is so abhorrent, something is so unforgivable to them. Sidia said, letting the video play. The video was of a rocky area, with caves and tunnels. The head of manufacturing immediately recognized it as the Hurt Rivillian mines. Due to the very electrically active material, modern technology was unusable. This, of course, calls to be fairly dangerous work and need individuals to do the brunt of the labor. Over a few minutes, scenes of workers being beaten, harassed, at one point even shot with small firearms. Not lethal, but most definitely not pleasant for those on the wrong end of it. This video didn't use to phase me. It's simply normal. Labor for the greater good. The last words, time not mistaken as a stutter, but something else, something deeper. The humans, they're not just interesting for the use of emotions. They're interesting for other reasons. Their ability to teach them, Celia said, bringing up her arm from under the table, raising a weapon towards the guards. Before they could fire back, a slew of fire came from behind her as the doors opened, and those other scientists, the many that accompanied her to Earth, came in, holding the brutish, blocky weapons of the humans. Methodical fire came from each of them, marching over the bodies of the guards and towards the oh-so-great leaders. Celiath coming upon the head of manufacturing, standing over his shaking form. So did we inherit, too, their ability to teach emotions, Celia said, raising the weapon to his temple. Do you know wrath, Celia said. The last thing the manufacturing head heard and saw, being the muzzle flash and bang of a gun. The same final moments of so many of those laborers that he had condemned to death on her rebellion. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope 
that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.